Hi guys, nothing to prove here. Today's a beautiful day, cause any day one can be out on two wheels is a beautiful day. And yeah, today we take out the 901 Norden. Oh yeah, she looks good in the sun here. Don't know how it would be on a cloudy day. Who cares, it looks good in the sun. Now, Husqvarna has thrown their hat into the middleweight adventure group. This is their first offering this year. So now we have a list of middleweight adventure bikes. As you can see here, everybody's got an adventure bike on this list. You can see we start out with the Tenere first. I've got these arranged kind of in weight order. Then you have the V-Strong Versus Adventure, and there is the Norden sitting right there. About 218, 220 kilos or thereabouts, depending on options and stuff. Then you continue on with the Tiger, the Multistrada, the V2, Guzzi V85 TT, and the, also, of course, the BMW 850GS. You notice a trend here, and this trend is true with every bike in this group but this. What's that trend? The heavier the bike, the more expensive it gets, and the bigger the motor that we have, except for this bike is not one of the heaviest, but yet it still is the most expensive in this group. Okay, now, the power numbers. Take a look there. Where is it? It's about right in the middle there for power. So, and delivery. Uh, and so, it's right there with, with some of the big dogs there also. So, can't complain about the power on this machine, but you can't complain about the price, but not the weight. So, how does this power train feel on the street? Okay, so the powertrain really, uh, it does have the low down grunt from the 890 motor. Yeah, I can tell that right away. It's got the same sound, although it's a little quieter. But the, the engine noise is the same as what I'm referring to on this. And the mapping is my only complaint. It's not as stable because uh, you can see I'm in street mode here. Uh, and I expected it to be pretty easy. Yeah, and down. Let's go down, 5-4. Okay. Oh, it's got that little lurch as you're going down. Uh, that's a little disconcerting. But overall, yeah, it's, a, it's an 890 Adventure powertrain. Uh, yeah, great quick shifter on this thing. No complaints, no worries about it. Five, four, three, two, now let's go. Yeah, this is flawless quick shifter, guys. So, for as far as the powertrain, this is, yeah, it's, it's very good. No problems, two thumbs for me. Now let's go up to the chassis guys. You can see here, these are fully adjustable, manually adjustable on both sides there and there. Uh, for preload, which is good, I love that. And compression and rebound. 220 mils of travel. Ooh, that's a lot of travel. So you can tell here, with that travel and this 21 inch tire, look at that bad boy. Yeah, that is a huge back front, I'm sorry, front tire. Mounted to 320 mil discs, dual. And, but what do you notice here? Yeah, those are four pots, but Husqvarna branded. Those are the J1s there, and they say derived from the MotoGP tech. But if I'm going to pay 15 grand for a middleweight adventure bike, give me the Brembo name on there and not J1 with your Husqvarna branding over top. 
On the rear here, same thing, Husqvarna two pots, 260 mil disc, and 215 mils of rear travel with preload and rebound. So how does this suspension feel on the street? Now the suspension, you see me doing this and just trying to get a feel for this suspension. It is a little more plush than the A90 Adventure. Uh, so I can tell it's set up to do more touring, more on-road. Uh, but it still rails into corners like this. Uh, so, hmm, I'm, I'm liking the suspension actually. <laughs> and the brakes here, let me brake hard into this corner. And, uh, oh, not bad. Okay, good feel, good feedback. Let me drop two gears and go. Yeah, yeah, this suspension, it, it, it is sticking. Even though it has a lot of travel, it is sticking pretty good. And the rear brake, oh yeah, locked it up there. <laughs> well, these are new tires, and the bike had 20 kilometers on it when I took it out, so yeah. Now let's move on with the rest of this bike, shall we? Coming back here, you can see this mounting rack. It looks like you can put a nice hefty top case on there. Uh, and of course it has the high mount here. Yeah, that's always going to have it on these adventure bikes. Coming around to the seat. If you take a look here, it is nice and wide and also for a passenger, but hard. Uh, seat height. 854 goes all the way it will go up 20 millimeters to 874 you can see right there i have it in the low position and i can pretty much almost flat this foot this and i am 5 foot 10 178 centimeters with a 32 inch inseam so how does this bike look with me on it there i'm flat footing both right now so it's not too bad at this seat height so you taller guys will want to bring it up a little bit, but hey, it's good. 19 liter tank filled up this tank, weighs, this thing weighs around 220 kilos, give or take. And with 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers on the fuel economy scale, you can get some pretty decent range out of this. I'm very surprised, Husky, that was a good job. Now, how does this bike feel in this dominant riding, upright riding position feel, like say in town. Yeah, I'm liking this in town. It's a nice upright riding position. There is no doubt that you have a good view all the way around you. The mirrors, eh, it could be better, but uh, the only complaint would be in town would be this mapping. I, that would bother me, but in town manners is pretty good for this bike. Well, it should be for its weight and also its riding position. You can see I, I am really just sitting perfectly upright on this thing and nice wide handlebars here. Yeah, so two thumbs up for in town manners. Uh, but that throttling or mapping, the fueling, uh, that would kind of ruin it for me. It could be though the mapping that uh, this thing only has 30 kilometers on it and it'll smooth out over time. I would hope so because I would not want to drop this kind of coin and have to live with this mapping. <laughs> Those lights right there, that's annoying. Those two dots. See, they're gone, but only when you have your son at your back. That's annoying seeing those when you have your son at the back. You see this on all KTMs too. The Adventures and uh, GTs and so on. All the K newer KTMs with the TFT. Let's come up to the controls. 
hmm, this looks almost like a KTM. Almost like a KTM. <gasps> that is a KTM. <laughs> Joking aside, yeah, this is all KTM controls and also the smaller KTM TFT. So I'm like, hmm, paying 15K for a small TFT. No, uh, Husky, you should have put, or KTM, you should have put your 7-inch on here. For that kind of cash, I can get into a 1290 Super Adventure with a 7-inch screen or GT. Well, GT won't do off-road, but for five grand more. So, I mean, we're in the ballpark here, almost. Not really. But that is, I, I from back here, you guys see where I am. So I put this. I'm sorry, I cannot read this writing over here. I need to get out my reading glasses. So that's my one concern. The rest I can read, but everybody says, well, that's all you need is gas, RPMs, and, and speed, right? Yeah. And then, you know, you have your ABS, uh, your modes, and your traction control there. But overall, uh, if this thing wasn't the price leader, I wouldn't criticize the TFT, but because it is the price leader in this category of middleweight adventure bikes, you need a bigger TFT if you're going to ask that kind of money. That's just me, guys. Some of you may think otherwise and love it. Um, now, who is this bike for? That would be the question. Well, if you're going to do some off-road, and then when you, but to get, to that off-road riding, you have to go a long ways or several hours on asphalt. Well, this is a good option because with this 21-inch front and 18-inch rear, that's pretty good. So if you're serious about off-road and you're going to do on-road, I would say 30, 70, 30 off, 70 on. This is a great alternative, guys. Take a look at it. If you got the cash, um, that, uh, that's also the problem once you get into this price range for this bike. Uh, so would I give it two thumbs? I would if the price was, say, two grand less. Get it into the price range of the KTM, for example, or the Tiger. Uh, although once you get to the Tiger, the Rally, you're talking same money. So it just really depends on what you want. Guys, um, is it a good bike? Yes. Do I recommend it? Oh, yeah. Two thumbs up. But with that caveat, if you're going to do some off-road. If not, be honest with yourself. If I'm only off-road 1, 2, 5% of the time, nah, look somewhere else. But if you're going to do more than that, then, yeah, consider this bike. All right, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this review. As always, guys, ride safe. That's most important on a list. That's, that's number one. And number two, guys, ride like there's nothing to prove. Take care. Cheers.